Saudi Arabia is doing something the rest of the world can barely wrap its head around. They're building a river. Not just any river. The longest artificial river on the planet. 12,000 kilometers. Now just pause and picture that for a second. That's longer than the entire Nile. Longer than the Amazon. And way, way longer than anything that should reasonably exist in one of the driest countries on Earth. But this isn't just about building a waterway. It's not about aesthetics or tourism. It's about survival. It's about a country reimagining what's possible when nature gives you lemons, and you respond by designing your own lemon grove. With irrigation, of course. See, Saudi Arabia has no rivers. None. Zilch. Not a single natural river flowing across its land. Which is kind of wild when you think about how big the country is. So how did they even make it this far? This isn't a small irrigation channel or a gimmicky water attraction for tourists. This is the largest artificial river ever attempted by humans, stretching a mind-bending 12,000 kilometers. And yet, not even a single stream cutting through the landscape. No babbling brooks. No glistening lakes fed by snowmelt. Just sand. Endless sand. And for generations, that shaped everything. Saudi Arabia? They had to make every drop count like it was gold. That's why this whole idea of building a river, not just a fake stream in a park, but a full-blown 12,000-kilometer-long artificial river, feels like a plot twist. It's not just a bold idea. It's rewriting the country's relationship with water from the ground up, literally. So, how did Saudi Arabia survive all these years without rivers? Once Saudi Arabia started pumping it out, the pressure dropped fast. Fields thrived, cities grew, and fountains even flowed in public parks. But the deeper they drilled, the louder the warning signs became. Aquifers don't send refills, and relying on this ancient reserve was like living off savings without a plan to earn more. Then came desalination, the process of removing salt from seawater to make it drinkable. Saudi Arabia embraced it with full force. Underneath all that success was a growing concern. Could this be sustained forever? Or was it a high-stakes sprint toward a dry finish line? It was a spectacle. Satellite photos showed green circles popping up across the sand like life had been digitally copy-pasted into the desert. But this miracle came at a cost. Fossil water was draining fast. The energy required to desalinate and transport water was immense. And most of the agriculture, while impressive, wasn't sustainable long term. By the mid-90s, it became clear that something had to change. The government began scaling back. Wheat farming was gradually phased out. By 2016, Saudi Arabia had stopped domestic wheat production entirely, choosing to import instead. Water was no longer free. New policies encouraged conservation, modern irrigation, and smarter infrastructure. And that brings us to today. Saudi Arabia isn't just trying to manage water anymore, it's trying to master it, and this artificial river is the centerpiece of that plan. So what exactly is this artificial river, and how does it work? At its core, the project is an underground, desalinated water superhighway. Water is drawn from the Red Sea, desalinated using the latest technology, and pushed through a network of massive underground pipelines. These aren't the kind of pipes you'd find in your backyard plumbing. They are industrial-grade, anti-corrosion pipes, each measuring 2.25 meters in diameter, wide enough for a grown adult to walk through upright. In this system, it's designed to stretch 12,000 kilometers. For scale, that's about twice the length of the Nile River and long enough to wrap around the earth more than once if laid out end to end. It's an engineering statement as much as it is a utility project. This isn't just some oversized pipeline, it's the water version of the Great Wall of China, except it's buried beneath the sand. It quietly snakes through the landscape, invisible to the eye, but vital to everything above it. We're talking about infrastructure so ambitious, it could literally connect continents if redirected. It's not flashy, no one's taking selfies with it, but it's the backbone of a new future. A future where the desert might not just survive, but thrive. And the best part? It's built to last generations, not just fix a short-term problem. But why underground? Why hide something so massive? Simple. Evaporation. 
In desert climates, water left on the surface vanishes into the air faster than it can be used. Temperatures can climb so high that even concrete sweats. By keeping the river underground, Saudi Arabia protects its most precious asset. No scorching sun, no sandstorms, just a cool, contained flow of water that can be directed wherever it's needed. The river's width is designed to be around 11 meters with a depth of 4 meters, ensuring a consistent and powerful flow. It's not just about moving water from point A to point B, it's about reaching the most remote, arid zones in the kingdom. Areas that have been historically untouchable by any kind of agriculture are suddenly within reach. And then there's the volume. The artificial river will be capable of producing around 9.4 million cubic meters of fresh water daily. That's enough to support millions of people, countless farms, and a wide swath of industrial demand. This isn't just about quenching thirst. It's about fueling an entire green transformation. Imagine once barren land slowly turning green, trees lining the desert roads, farming villages cropping up in places where even camels used to think twice about walking. That's the dream. And now, it's backed by a real, physical pipeline. But behind the scenes, there's a technological ballet happening. Two major types of desalination are being used, membrane desalination and thermal desalination. Membrane desalination works like this. Seawater is pushed through a series of ultra-fine filters that trap salts and impurities while allowing pure water molecules to pass. It's energy efficient, scalable, and perfect for the high demand of a project this size. Thermal desalination, on the other hand, involves heating seawater until it evaporates. The salt is left behind and the vapor is collected and condensed into fresh water. It's an older method, more energy intensive, but still highly effective, especially in a country with plenty of energy to burn. Together, these technologies are being deployed across Saudi Arabia's 27 desalination plants, which contribute to a staggering 1.6 billion cubic meters of fresh water per year. That's 18% of the entire world's desalinated water supply from one country. And it's not stopping there. The Saline Water Conversion Corporation, SWCC, a state-run entity, oversees this vast network. It's their job to keep the water flowing, the plants running, and the kingdom hydrated. And they're not just producing water, they're also generating energy. These desalination plants produce nearly 25 million megawatt hours of electricity, enough to support water operations and feed into the country's broader infrastructure. It's a model of closed-loop sustainability. And here's what really makes this project special. It's not just about solving Saudi Arabia's water issues. It's about economic reinvention. For decades, Saudi Arabia's economy has been deeply tied to oil. But oil prices are volatile. The global market is shifting. And the age of renewables is rising. By investing in massive, future-forward infrastructure like this artificial river, Saudi Arabia is laying the groundwork for a post-oil future, a future where agriculture, sustainability, and self-reliance become the new national currency. This artificial river isn't a side project, it's a strategic pivot, a foundation for farming, food production, clean water access, and economic diversity. It's part of a broader national transformation, one where high-tech innovation meets ancient geography and reshapes it entirely. For a country that had no rivers, no reliable rainfall, and barely any fresh water to speak of, this is a radical new chapter, a complete rewrite of the script. Instead of waiting for nature to provide, Saudi Arabia is engineering its own ecosystem, designing a landscape where deserts grow crops, where coastlines pump life into the heart of the nation, and where underground pipelines bring more hope than any rainfall ever could. This isn't just about Saudi Arabia anymore. It's about setting a global precedent, showing what's possible when vision, science, and necessity all point in the same direction. A reminder that geography isn't destiny, and that even in the harshest environments on Earth, it's still possible to imagine and build a better way to live. If this story left you amazed, now's the time to hit that like button. Share the video with someone who still thinks the desert is just dust. And don't forget to subscribe for more incredible updates from the world's boldest innovations. 
the future of water just got redefined, deep beneath the sands of Saudi Arabia.